I want to talk about modifying your, your firearms and self-induced problems. I'll tell you what I mean, and I want to talk about Ben's mistakes that, that he has made. And I have, as it turns out, not surprising to anyone who knows me, I have made yet another mistake with a firearm. Anyway, this is a Shadow 2. This is a lovely gun if you like the idea of doing USPSA. It is... It, it's a really good tool for the job. There's lots of aftermarket accessories. And you know, after a while with these things, like with ARs or with 1911s or with Glocks, after a while, the success just kind of feeds on itself because there's this whole ecosystem of products. And that's kind of happened inside of USPSA circles with the Shadow 2. There's all kinds of different grip options and there's multiple manufacturers of different uh, part upgrades for the gun you know, it's a good gun. It's a good gun. And the way that um, mine are, most of them, is they're very, very close to factory. Uh, my, mine have, I think, a different recoil spring that's slightly lighter. I have a slightly lighter hammer spring in mine. And then the reach reduction kit in this gun, which allows me to reach the, tri the trigger face a little bit easier, especially in double action mode, so I can grip the gun like so. It is, this is a really good gun. And to be honest, it's pretty reliable. Like if, if the gun's not running, something is broken or worn. Probably there's something wrong with the extractor. Uh, like I need to look at that. Now other parts can break. The slide stops can break. The trigger return springs can break. But to be honest, with the Shadow 2s, they're a big, big improvement over the older models. Like I have never broken a slide stop in one of my Shadow 2s. I have never broken a trigger return spring in one of my Shadow 2s. They just, they work better than the older models of the gun. Well, this gun works better uh, until it doesn't. So what I did, just because this is, this is my normal decision making, I bought a fleet of these Shadow 2s a little while back. And I got a, I got a bunch of them and they were all set up just like this guy here. You know, reasonably, I mean, I wouldn't even really say modified, just, just kind of fitted to me. Um, the grips we could talk about or whatever, but the gun just, you know, set up right for me and it's going to work for a long time. Now on one of my guns, I think, I think we had uh, somebody send me an aftermarket hammer, aftermarket sear, and it's like, hey, let's, let's uh, install this stuff. Let's make your, your trigger that's like maybe like three pounds in single action mode, very little travel, right? Very little travel, little take up, three pounds right through there, or like six and a half or seven pounds with a, with a fairly smooth double action. They're like, you know what we should do with that? That works good. We should fix it till it doesn't. So that's what happened with this gun. Um, and the reason I'm talking about this is so many people do this. So, so many people do this. Um, on this gun, my friend who is not qualified in any way, shape, or form to install this stuff is like, hey, do you wanna do you want to install these this you know go fast hammer, you know, on your on your gun? And I think there's a the sear inside as well. Do I want those things? And I'm like, eh, I mean, it's probably just gonna break or probably won't work, but whatever. Yep, go ahead and fire it up. And sure enough. These, these parts were installed in this gun and it ran super duper for like three, four, 5,000 rounds. And now uh, when I'm shooting live ammo, the hammer is just going to fall to, I think, half cock. The hammer's it's going to fall to half cock and I get a lot of double action presses in there like that. Clearly, the hammer and sear were not fitted correctly. It's not like the fault of, I think this is from Cajun. It's not like Cajun's fault. Like the guy didn't, it wasn't installed correctly. It wasn't fitted right. Um... And after a few thousand rounds, it failed. Um, this, this thing, this, what's happened here, this is a lot of people. A lot of people do this. Uh, now, I don't do this that much. And I did this knowingly. Like I had a bunch of guns. I'm like, yeah, we can mess with one of them. We'll mess with one of the guns. And sure enough, after a few thousand rounds, now this thing's fallen to half cock. And it's going to need, I'm just going to put in a factory factory hammer and sear and, and fix this thing up. But it, it just gets me thinking so many people, they, if they get a gun that works, they're going to fix it until it doesn't. 
They're going to think like, oh, if we get the trigger a little lighter, like, ooh, we get the travel a little bit less. That's going to make it better. And uh, I understand that thinking, the, the need to tinker. But the fact is the variable you want to control with shooting is you. Like you want your skills to grow. You want you to get better so you can adapt those skills to whatever you've got. Like whatever whatever firearm you're using, you want to be able to use it the most effectively. Modifying your gun the most, doesn't it doesn't make you better at shooting. And it marginally improves the guns in, until it doesn't. And then the guns don't work. And this is a lesson. I'm sure I'll keep learning it for the rest of my life because I'm kind of a slow learner. But you guys should learn from, from my mistakes. Next time someone's like, hey, do you want me to, you know, take your, your perfectly functioning firearm and make it better? It's like, probably you should answer no. Unless you're okay with changing parts and tinkering with it sort of endlessly. Then, you know, fire away. You do you. But for me, <laughs> it's, a, it's another reminder Stop monkeying with my guns because it, it doesn't help me. It never helps.